If you're curious as to what is the difference between a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment in the United States Army, well then stick around because that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. What's up my friends? Welcome to an all new video. I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos and in this video we're talking about the differences between a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment and yes I'm aware that you're probably thinking okay a combat deployment you're probably gonna get shot at possibly you know have a chance of getting killed and people you know trying to uh, you know plant roadside bombs against you right you're probably thinking about that stuff and then non-combat is a lot safer nobody should be shooting at you. Obviously I get those differences. I'm trying to go a little bit more in depth than just that, right? There's a little bit more to it than simply one you might get killed and one you might not get killed at kind of a thing. We're gonna go a little bit more in depth and if that's what you're interested in or even content related to the Army and you're not already subscribed to this channel, well then make me think about hitting that subscribe button. Also think about clicking on that bell to get alerts as soon as the new videos go live to include the live streams and become a part of that awesome notification platoon. So let's talk about what is the difference really between a combat deployment in the Army and a non-combat deployment in the Army. Now, specifically, I say Army because I was a U.S. Army veteran who deployed twice to Iraq to combat deployments. Now, some of this stuff may pertain to Navy or Marines or Air Force or whatever, but I don't, I don't know that for sure, right? I was in the Army, so my experience is being in the Army on a combat deployment. So I'm giving my perspective as the Army. You're going to talk to one of those individuals to find out if it still applies to them. There's a good chance that a lot of it does, but for the most part, I'm talking about the Army here. So diving into it, we're gonna have to knock out some of the obvious things, of course, but before we kind of do that, maybe some of you aren't too sure what is a deployment? What categorizes something as a deployment? And let me explain that real briefly first. So a deployment is, let's say you're a part of the 4th Infantry Division, right? The entire 4th Infantry Division temporarily moves to another location, whether that's a combat zone or a non-combat zone, to conduct some kind of mission or training. That is a deployment, usually for a certain you know, time frame, maybe something more than a month kind of a thing. That is a deployment, and then when they're done with that mission or that time frame that they have allocated for that deployment, they all return together kind of in waves, not all at once, but it'll be in some kind of short waves. So they all return back together and go back to operations at that location where they originally came from. That is different from you as an individual going to another location and joining in with another unit. That's a PCS, that's a change of duty station, that's something different. A deployment is an entire unit temporarily moving to one location to another to conduct a mission, to conduct training, and then returning back to the original location. So that kind of is basically what a deployment is. I feel like I have to knock that out for some people that aren't too clear as to what exactly is a deployment. Now let's get into some of the obvious ones. Of course, obviously you have on a combat deployment, a threat, right? Probably you're there to, you know, win the war or accomplish some kind of objective, you're accomplishing some kind of mission, whatever the case is, and it's in a hostile territory where someone doesn't want you doing what you're there to do, right? They're gonna be shooting at you possibly. You're possibly, you know, have people plant roadside bombs, you know, mortar attacks, whatever. There's kind of a hostile threat in that area. Whereas a non-combat deployment, Obviously, there shouldn't be a hostile threat. It's a non-combat deployment. You're probably there to conduct some kind of peace operating mission, some kind of training operation or whatever at those locations. So you shouldn't have to worry about people shooting at you or some kind of threat of someone trying to you know, take your life. Of course, those are you know, some obvious ones. There's other subtle obvious ones that I wanna knock out as well. That being that on a combat deployment, you receive a combat patch. So that means that soldiers, when they're in a combat environment for a certain amount of time, they receive a combat patch. That's just an extra patch that goes on their opposite sleeve than their normal unit patch. And that represents the unit they were deployed with to a combat zone. On a non-combat deployment, you don't get that. So that's an obvious thing. Another really big obvious one to point out is that on a combat deployment, you receive you know, combat pay. You're gonna receive additional pay based on the threat in that area. Now, on a non-combat deployment, you could potentially receive hazard pay, depending on some circumstances of the area. Maybe you're within a close relation to a hostile area or something that's happening in that area that may justify you to receive hazard pay. Uh, but you know, typically, combat deployment, you receive combat pay. Non-combat deployment, no combat pay. On a combat deployment, your paycheck is tax-free, so you're not having to pay federal or state taxes or anything like that, so you get tax-free paychecks on a combat deployment that you don't have to pay back when it comes time to do taxes. There's a spot in there to you know, mark that you're on a combat deployment and some kind of justification for it, you know, maybe some proof maybe you know, to an accountant or whatever if you're doing it that way, but you don't have to pay those taxes back. That's just tax-free pay in that combat zone. 
on a non-combat deployment, you're still paying taxes. It works a little bit differently with state taxes, but you still have like federal and social security and all that stuff you're still paying while you're on the non-combat deployment, but you do still have to pay taxes out of your paycheck for a non-combat deployment. Now start to dive into a little bit more subtle things as far as differences between a combat deployment and non-combat deployment. Now there are even some similarities, right? On a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment, you have a mission to do, right? Both of them have some kind of mission to do. Combat deployment may be a more hostile type of mission, but a non-combat deployment stuff is kind of mission to do. Your mission on a non-combat deployment might be to still do some basic operations to help out the local area, maybe humanitarian aid, maybe just helping with that local nation to conduct training. Maybe you're you know, receiving some training from them, whatever. You still have some kind of mission that you still have to do while you're there. So often that may be your mission on that non-combat deployment is training. You might be there for the point of you're helping that local nation you know, train, learning some things from the US military. So you're doing training with these local nationals to, you know, they can you know, learn from the United States. Maybe they're teaching you some things maybe, maybe you're learning some stuff from them. And at the same time, you might be you know, doing some kind of joint operations with that local nation. So a lot of times that's the point of the non-combat deployment is to train with some of those allied forces or maybe just help assist those allied forces in peacekeeping type of missions. Where on that combat side, it's more of a violent mission, I guess, you know, whether it's to take back an area that maybe was controlled by Taliban or whatever the case is, you know, you still have a mission to accomplish. It's just a little bit more of a hostile type of mission that you have to conduct. Now I talked about how on a non-combat deployment, you don't receive combat pay, right? So that is a difference, right? Combat zone, you're in a combat deployment, you receive combat pay, tax-free, all that stuff like that. But there are still some cases where on a non-combat deployment, you could receive a little bit extra pay from what is called COLA. COLA stands for cost of living allowance, and that is usually factored in when you're in an area that has a higher cost of living than the United States. That isn't everywhere, so it may just kind of depend on that area, whether they have COLA or they don't have it or whatever. So you may receive a little bit extra based on where you're at for that non-combat deployment because the cost of living is higher than the average in the United States. That's not a whole lot, so don't expect to be banking off of that. That may only be a difference of an extra 20 bucks per month in your paycheck, maybe a little bit more, maybe it's 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever, but don't expect it to be huge game-changing money that you're making on top of you know being on this deployment in that non-combat zone. Now in a non-combat deployment, there is a possibility that you're gonna to go to the field. You're still gonna be conducting training where you shouldn't be doing that on a combat deployment. On a combat deployment, you're there for a mission, you have you know, some kind of combat mission to accomplish. If you have time outside of that combat mission to go to the field, like something, something weird's going on there. On a non-combat deployment, you probably are gonna still go to the field. You probably have some time in that local garrison area type of thing where you're doing day-to-day -day tasks. And then maybe there's like a week, a weekend, two weeks, whatever the case is, where your unit is gonna go out to the field and do some training. So on a non-combat deployment, you will still probably go to the field. On a combat deployment, there are a lot of restrictions compared to a non-combat deployment. So when you're in a combat zone on a combat deployment, you're not going sightseeing, all right? You might get to see some sights when you're out on mission, sure, but not to the extent of like, hey, it's the weekend, let's go check out some of the local market and see what they have to offer and what the cool sights are to see. Not in that extent. When I was like in Iraq, yeah, I got to see some palaces, I got to see some cool stuff, but it was while on mission that I got to see those things, not because I had free time and I got to just take off on the weekend and go sightsee. You probably don't want to go sightsee on a combat deployment anyways, but just a, a general thing, be aware you're not gonna to get to go sightseeing on a combat deployment. On a non-combat deployment, you might have those opportunities, right? You're in a local area, maybe you're in Poland, maybe you're in Korea, whatever the case is for that non-combat deployment, and you might have opportunities like in the weekends or during the week or whatever the case is, depending on what your mission is there, to maybe go out you know, and see some sites and check out some things, be a tourist for a little bit. You probably have somewhat restrictions as far as you probably need to be with a battle buddy kind of a thing. Someone in your unit, you probably get it, can't, not supposed to maybe go by yourself. You're probably supposed to go with at least another person, right? Or maybe multiple people, depending on what the leadership kind of delegates. But you might have opportunities to actually see the sites and probably do so in civilian clothes, which is also another big difference between a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment. On a combat deployment, you probably only have one pair of civilian clothes, which are supposed to be for like emergency leave. And if you need to change into civilian clothes to go home for emergency leave, then you might have those civilian clothes with you, but you're not allowed to wear civilian clothing. You're always just wearing your physical fitness uniform or your military uniform. That's it. 
on a non-combat deployment, you probably have more civilian clothing with you. You probably have the opportunity to be able to, on your off time, to wear civilian clothes. So you do have that chance where you don't get that chance on a combat deployment. Also, when it comes to alcohol, right? On a combat deployment, you are not allowed to consume alcohol. You might have some opportunities, maybe like during the Super Bowl, where they allow you to have one or two beers, and some people find ways around that, right? And even farther ways around that to actually have alcohol during that combat deployment, but you're not supposed to, right? The rules say no alcohol during that combat deployment. Sometimes that gets flexed a little bit during Super Bowl, and then some people just go beyond that and they find ways to smuggle in alcohol, right? And they consume alcohol, but you're not supposed to be doing those kind of things on a combat deployment because they need you to be combat ready at all times. They don't want to have to be like, hey, we can't send this person out on a mission because he's pretty hungover from last night or he's still pretty drunk, right? Because he's been drinking and all of a sudden some something came up in the middle of the night and now that person is no longer able to you know, do their tasks because they're hammered. On a non-combat deployment, you have lighter restrictions, right? You may have opportunities to actually go out and go drinking. You're gonna be on the weekends, maybe on your free time, maybe just in the barracks, you know, on your off time, you know, drinking with some friends and having some drinks. You may still have some restrictions based on like the local leadership as far as their guidance, where maybe there is certain days that are restricted, or maybe you're only allowed to consume so much alcohol, or maybe even that specific deployment, maybe they've just said that no alcohol whatsoever. That may vary, but you at least have that possibility sometimes on a non-combat deployment where there could be a possibility that you're allowed to consume alcohol if you're of age for being able to do so, to do that while you're on the non-combat deployment and you know have a few drinks with some friends or maybe some, a few drinks out on the town. Now, this one isn't always the case. Typically, a non-combat deployment is shorter than a combat deployment, but even nowadays, they have a lot of units that are trying to shorten the amount of time that soldiers are spending in a combat zone compared to what they used to do in the past. In the past, you used to have you know combat deployments where one year, maybe 15 months, whatever the case was, something along those lines. Nothing really too crazy, like you know four, five, six years or anything crazy. So if you have someone, maybe you're talking to online, just saying for those scammers that may be trying to dupe people out there, you're not going to be deployed for like three, four, five years. So typically, a year, maybe 15 months, maybe is usually the average for a combat deployment. But even now they're kind of pulling back on that and there's a lot of units that are even doing like six month deployments to combat zones. So that isn't always the case anymore. There are still a lot of combat deployments that are short as well. It just kind of sometimes depends on what the mission is, what the unit is, and a lot of other factors. But on your non-combat deployments, those ones are usually maybe only six months, maybe only a year. You don't often have non-combat deployments past a year. There could be some situations that will call for that, but your most common ones are usually six months, three months, one year, something along those lines. Now, what you do on a combat deployment compared to non-combat deployment sometimes can be the same, sometimes not. So in the example, let's say like my MOS. When I was in the Army, I was an ADA Mike, motor transportation operator, so I did transportation. So my job while I was in Iraq was to transport things, whether it be barriers, ammo, food, whatever the case was, I was doing that just in a hostile area. On a non-combat deployment, you probably still do the same thing. You still be transporting a lot of those things for training purposes, for humanitarian aid or whatever. So you're still doing pretty much your same job. Just the matter of one location, you potentially could have people shooting at you where the other, you shouldn't have that problem to worry about. Now, that isn't to say that that's the case for all MOSs, but a lot of your MOSs is kind of similar to that. It probably would be the same where you're gonna be doing your same job on a combat deployment compared to non-combat deployment, just a matter of you know the hostile environment. But for say examples of maybe an 11 Bravo, it may not be that way. 11 Bravo on the combat deployment where their mission is gonna be you know kicking in doors, maybe assaulting objectives, whatever the case is. So they're more related to their job actually fully functioning and hostile and you know engaged in the enemy and all that kind of stuff on a combat deployment. On a non-combat deployment, they obviously don't have that. So on a non-combat deployment, their probably priority of that deployment is to maybe train with local nationals to teach them something, or maybe learn something from them, whatever the case is, and is probably more focused on training. And that non-combat deployment is probably just an entire deployment dedicated to training local nationals and maybe receiving some training from them. So you kind of have to factor that in there. Is your MOS something that can only be done in a combat zone or is your job something that can be done either in a combat or non-combat environment? will kind of determine you know, what your role will be compared to a combat zone compared to a non-combat deployment. It may be the same, but in some cases it may be very different. So that's a lot of the basics of what is the difference between a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment. There may be other things that I'm just not mentioning in this video and maybe additional things that you wanna know about. If so, we'll drop your questions down in the comment sections, maybe other areas that you wanna 
add to, maybe you're a veteran yourself or someone in the military and you wanna kinda of add to what I'm talking about and things that I didn't have time to elaborate on or just didn't elaborate on, you know, period, whatever the case is, you know, you can leave those down in the comment sections down below, but also your questions and I'll try my best to, you know, answer the questions that I can and some of my veteran viewers or maybe individuals that are currently in the Army can help me out and answer some down below as well. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up for me. Also think about sharing the video, maybe other individuals that may find this useful, maybe they wanna know the difference between a combat deployment and a non-combat deployment. Well, this video can hopefully help them out. Check out some of the links down in the description for like social media, affiliate links, all sorts of stuff. Check those out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos and I'll see you next time. See ya.